We're talking about patterns today, and one way that you can really see patterns develop is by using different shapes of beads. So take a look at the bracelet that I'm going to show you how to make. This is a memory wire wraparound bracelet, and it uses these tile-shaped beads. It also has Delica seed beads in between, and it also uses Baroque pearls at the front. So by combining the Baroque pearls, the Tila beads, and the Delicas, you can really create an interesting pattern without making it very difficult. It has an intricate look, but it's easy to do. So the first thing that you do is take your memory wire, which is stainless steel. It's tempered to remember its shape, so you don't need a clasp, and it looks like a coil like this. And for this bracelet, you'll just cut a piece with the ends overlapping. And it doesn't have to be precise because we will have to trim it when we get to the end anyway. So you'll want to cut two that are with the ends overlapping like that. And you definitely want to use a memory wire shear. This is a steel tool that's been hardened to deal with tempered wire. If you use your ordinary cutters, you can take a little notch out of the tips. So to finish the ends of this bracelet, we'll use the round nose pliers and you just come to the end of the wire and roll it back. I always roll against the natural curve of the wire because it's easier to bend. If you try to bend it forward, it seems like it's more difficult. So do that on both pieces of wire. You're just making a basic loop right at the end. Okay, so once you have your two pieces, then you're going to thread the Tila bead onto the wire. And they're called that because they're that tile shape and they have two holes in the end. They come in lots of different colors that can work really well too. You could even get some exciting things going on with color. Now, when you put the, this is a little bit tricky here, so when you put the wire through the first bead, you just wanna make sure that your second wire is facing the same direction. So what I do is bring the bead all the way to the end so that you can see where it is next to the loop so here I can tell that my loop needs to be on this side of the bead, so they're the same. So I'll feed it through the same direction on the other set of holes. It's kind of like a slider, really. And it's great for two-strand two designs. You can also work them into beadwork in lots of in really interesting ways. So there you go. And I can tell that my bead is sliding under the loops here, so I need to use my chain nose or round nose pliers to tighten the loops up because I don't want that to happen. I want to make sure that the loop is all the way closed before I begin. Now, if you take a look at this one here, just remove my stopper, you can see at the end where I have the Tila bead first, then I put three seed beads on each wire. Okay, then it's a Tila bead and three seed beads, and it's that same pattern the whole way around. And I love the way that the matte beads work together with the shiny beads, it really creates um, just a beautiful palette. So now at the end, you can see I've already trimmed one wire. I think I even want it a little bit shorter, maybe about a half an inch. So I'll use my memory wire shears and always make sure that you turn the work down so your wire doesn't go flying. Then use your round nose pliers to make that loop again on the end. And you'll do that for both wires. Do be careful here, just be mindful that your beads are made of glass and try to keep your plier tips away from the bead. Okay, so now once you have your two loops, you're going to use a set of three head pins. And I have some prepared right here. I just put a head pin through my Baroque Pearl and made a wrapped loop. And I did three and put them on a jump ring, which makes it easy to attach to the end. And with your jump ring, of course, you always want to listen for that little click when you're closing it. And you'll just attach one of these through both loops at the end of the bracelet. Okay, then close it up. You hear a little click and you put it back into place. And you'll do that for both ends. Take a look at this one here. I, I purposely left this with two overlapping on each side because that fit me, but you wanna be sure and check, you know, check your bracelet for fit. This is a nice loose one. You could also use a smaller piece of memory wire if you wanted to have it closer to your hand. This is more of a bangle style, but with the ease of being able to remove it, like a cuff. And let me show you a couple of the finished ones over here. This one is oval-shaped memory wire, and I love this color palette. And so what I did with this piece is, rather than the three seed beads between each, I varied the number. So it gives it a little more interest. I also varied the colors, and it has three. Instead of just two loops, it's three.
Now this one is a little bit more difficult to string. You want to make sure that you keep the wire in a coil as you're sliding the beads onto the wire. So rather than stretching the wire out, you know, flat. Make sure you keep it coiled and feed your beads on. And this one I call the wine and chocolate bracelet because it also has a raspberry color, the chocolate, and the dark wine bead. So this one's a good girlfriend gift. Then this one, again, this is a little more intricate pattern. But if you take a close look, here, I'll just set it down so you can see. If you take a close look at that one, you'll see I have the double strands going through the tila beads. And then on the single strands, I have Baroque pearls on one, seed beads on the other, and that alternates the whole way around. So that gives you a different pattern, and it also creates some texture, some interest. It gives the look of a wraparound bracelet, and it really sets off those special beads.